great. And it looks like we're on YouTube and on Facebook. So everyone should know the drill by now. I'm just going to take a second here to check up on everything. Almost done. For those of you that are starting to hop on here with us, you know I like to see comments and thumbs up. It gives me a chance to know who is actually watching and give you that recognition and then I can get started and going. So if you are watching with us, go ahead and start commenting, please. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and get us going. Um, good morning to everybody. I'm Juliette Abdel, President and CEO of the Westminster Chamber of Commerce. Happy Tuesday to you. For those of you that are coming back with us, good morning and welcome back. For my newcomers, I hope to see you again past this uh, preview episode, so make sure that you hit the like button, hit the follow so you can get those timely alerts. Also know that we're streaming this on YouTube at the same time, so if you're ever on the road or know somebody that's averse to um, Facebook and wants to still access this, the broadcasts are available on our YouTube page. They're also available on our COVID resource hub page. I've included the extensive link for you in the comment section so you can find that later on and click through on. So today's broadcast, as many of you are aware, on Tuesdays, we actually host our business success series. This is an opportunity where we highlight a business or organization that is really doing um, some good work. They have overcome COVID, they've weathered it, and they have a new normal. So our, our way of highlighting and show, showcasing what they're doing is by introducing them via a spotlight. So before I introduce today's topic to you, I want to pull up at least one of the comments that I have on here, and that's from our board chair, Brian Dice, um, sharing his good morning message um, and thanking Nathan for coming on the broadcast with us. This comment feature is available to everybody. So at the bottom of this broadcast, you should see a comment section. That comment section is the way that I know who's on here with us. More importantly, it's for me to understand if we're doing something right, if the content that's being shared is valuable, and if there are any questions that you want us to address for you. Good morning to you, Wayne Anderson. Thank you so much for hopping on. So familiarize yourself with the comment section. Be sure that you type in any nuggets of knowledge that you might get or any questions that you may have. Today's broadcast is featuring Westminster's Farmer's Market. Here with us today is Nathan Mudd, and I've known Nathan for about three and a half years, exactly the time that I've been with the Westminster Chamber of Commerce, because he used to be on my board of directors. So um, his past involvement in our organization and in our community um, is something that I'm incredibly grateful for. And as he continues to venture and expand on his outreach, I'm excited to have him on here with us. Again, we have with us the Westminster Farmers Market. Nathan will lead the discussion and be sure to comment uh, any questions that you might have, comments you have in general or compliments. You know I am for those as well. Nathan, you can take it away. Awesome, thank you, Juliet. First off, thanks for having me on today. Uh, it's it's pretty exciting to do these things. Um, it, it, what an amazing change of pace uh, that we're all doing, and we're you know we're live, but we're not in person. Uh, but I think it's I think it's great to to be able to keep communicating with everybody. So, um, as Juliet was saying, I'm Nathan Mudd with the Westminster Farmers Market. Uh, so Westminster Farmers Market. We had a lot of challenges early on in February, March. We actually didn't know if we were going to have a farmer's market. Usually everything's dialed in, locked down. And by, um, by, you know, by early March, we're full. The farmer's market's full. I know who all's in there. 
this year we did not know if we were going to have a farmer's market until uh, the very first couple of days of June with the first farmer's market scheduled for, I believe, June 6th, which was a, it was either June 5th or 6th on a, on a Saturday this year. But so essentially I'm sure a lot of people have been to farmer's markets before you, you go, you meet, you get to shake the hand uh, that feeds you. You get to meet all different kinds of, of food producers. Uh, in the past, we've had a lot of different people that, um, you know, maybe they, they sell cooking ware or things that aren't food. Um, that was another challenge this year. We, based on the health department regulations, we weren't really uh, allowed to have, we were allowed to have, I think, two out of the 40 vendors that we have. And so um, had a lot of vendors who, did, for health reasons, they couldn't join us this year. And so we were, we, a, a process that usually takes about 30 to 40 hours per farmer's market to do uh, in order to gear up for it. It actually took about 200 hours this year. Um, one of the most interesting things that we do with all of our farmer's market people, and this is all preseason stuff to build up is we did Zoom calls. I've had businesses in the past where um, they've almost been exclusively conducted with the principles of the business over Zoom, but my vendors had never never been able, they had never done Zoom before. So, um, and you know, it used to be different things. It was Cisco, it was, uh, Google Voice, Google Google uh, Rooms. I uh, Google's changed the name like seven times. But anyway, so we've progressed. We got to June. Um, I still didn't know if it was going to happen. And then um, in talks with uh, council people, Rich Seymour and Anita Seitz, we were really able to kind of push city staff um, and then there's a there's a gentleman named Josh Vaughn within city staff that worked really, really hard because it wasn't just us, you know, the, the farmer's market or you guys running your businesses that were working from home. It was also a lot of city folks were working from home, too. So um, we I think we are affected by seven or eight departments within the city from police to fire to community development. Um, and so. We had to get all of those people on board. And then there's also the COVID team within the city of Westminster. Um, and as I'm sure a lot of you guys know, there's not events taking place throughout the Denver Metro this year. So uh, there, there have been a couple of different events that have popped up, but especially if they're not related to food, you're not, you're just not seeing them this year. And so um, it definitely took leadership within council and staff to make that happen. Um, and we're grateful that the market went off. Um, so early on in the, in the season, you get to the market, we have changed so many things. So instead of just a straight shot where you can go back and forth in between all of your, all of the vendors, Oh, I just want to see that one. It's no longer like that. You have uh, one entrance, one exit, and you have to walk, all the way around in a loop. And if uh, here, I'll do it on the camera all the way around in a loop. And if you want something over on this side, you've got to walk your way over there. And if you forgot, then you have to go back around the loop. So it's, it's one way traffic. And so usually our plans, um, our, our plans are usually about uh, one page with the city, the site plan and everything this year, I'm not going to go through all of them, but there are seven pages of single spaced, uh, plan to, to make this thing work. And that's in conjunction also with the, uh, with Jefferson County health. So I know Westminster's in uh, three different counties, but the market is, is all in Jefferson County. It's, um, it's at 98th and Sheridan at the Northwest church of Christ. Um, another amazing partner without them, we again, would not have a farmer's market. So those are, those are some of the initial adjustments. Uh, now, a challenge that we also face is face masks. And so a lot of, I know that a lot of businesses have this issue. Uh, we actually were super appreciative that the city of Westminster had a mask ordinance because the county was requiring us to do a mask ordinance. And we have another market in Arvada there is, there was no, uh, you know, statewide mandate or citywide mandate for masks in Arvada. 
And so that makes it, it made it early on, made it really challenging when you had customers come that didn't want to wear a mask. But in our, in the city of Westminster, it was made much easier because we could just say it's a citywide, uh, citywide mandate. We handed out free masks. We handed out hand sanitizer. We did everything we could to make sure that the customers adhered to the uh, safety standards um, and then our vendors as well. Uh, and the reason we were able to go as an event, the reason we were able to even have the event is because farmers markets as an extension of agriculture were considered and uh, I guess are still considered essential businesses. I know that we're not really doing um, so much of that delineation of this business, you know, picking winners or losers, as I've heard it said before. Um, but that's how we were able to start on time. Uh, now, because we are one of the few events that's taking place, we had hoped that, well, this means that our attendance will still be pretty good. Now, early on, there were still a lot of people that didn't want to leave their house, um, but everybody that came was so appreciative, not only that we were open, but that there were the safety precautions in place to be able to have it. And so while the overall market is still down about 40% in, in income, the vendors are up anywhere from, from 30 to 150%, depending on the vendor. And that's, uh, that's because they're, they're there, they're, um, they're, they're making it happen. Now, early on, a few, few minutes ago, I talked about how we lost or didn't have a lot of vendors um, coming to the market because of health reasons or whatnot, whatever reason. And so we are down uh, probably about 25 or 30% of our vendors. And some of those, um, some of the vendors that are still there, some of the high dollar return vendors that, that we have at the market, they can't do sampling. So that's still been a major effect on the overall farmer's market. Uh, one of the things I've always sold is our, is our garlic, our, our volcanic organic garlic. And I would, my sales, about 50% of my sales are based on garlic or I'm based on samples. I would just hand somebody a piece of garlic and say, here you go. It's a lot spicier and sweeter than normal garlic. Um, and people would look at me like it was crazy. I'm not eating raw garlic. And then they'd see other people doing it. And then they'd say, okay, I'm going to do it. So they, they know the bandwagon effect. And then I'd have 10, 15 people then bringing more people in. Well, I didn't have that this year. And so uh, that, that was, that's, that's been tough on, on a good group of the vendors. Um, so those have been, those have been some of the, some of the impacts that, that we've had both positive and negative. Um, I'm, I'm trying to see if there's any other notes on that. Uh, these are definitely, definitely adjustments. Oh, the entrance exit thing. I, I spoke about that a little bit, but that has been, it has actually made the flow of the market a lot smoother because now the customers that do come, they're at least walking by every single vendor. So it's, it's, it's definitely a lot better process for some of the lesser known vendors. Um, and we've placed the, uh, the big name vendors, one of them all the way at the end, and then one of them much closer to the exit. And that way, everybody's getting getting a look as they as they go by and it's definitely helped quite a bit of people now the other thing that's helped say your your barbecue sauce and and dry rubs and everything like that uh people are eating at home a lot more this year and by eating at home they're getting uh they're they're getting business that that's just not normal for because uh because they go out you know that you don't have the i go out to eat as much um so one of the really neat things that we've been, this is the biggest adjustment that we've done. And we have, uh, we, we also had a, a little bit of foresight back in 2012, we started the country's first online farmer's market. Um, and this is before everybody bought food from home and bought, or they didn't, they didn't buy food from home until recently, but People did some online shopping, but they Amazon wasn't a household name except for really books. That's that's you know Amazon did a lot of their stuff early on in uh, book warehousing, but nonetheless. So we started this, and you know what we heard over and over: nobody's ever going to buy food online. Nobody's ever going to buy any food online. They want to go to the grocery. Well, COVID came and changed all that, but 
before COVID came and changed it, we worked for four years building up the systems to make this happen. And then it, it didn't work because people weren't buying food from home. And then when Amazon bought uh, Whole Foods, a lot of people in the local food world and the grocery world, they, they didn't like it. Oh no. And I was, I was cheering saying, yes, Amazon will normalize purchasing food online. So fast forward to uh, March of this year, even as we were firing up the farmer's market in the background, we were spending most of our time um, that wasn't on the farmer's market, building up the online farmer's market. Uh, it's called edible far edible market .co, not .com, but edible market .co. And so that early on, especially because these vendors, they do, they do different food events and, and different things throughout the year. And without all of those early events, these vendors were, were devastated. I mean, they lost, uh, they lost 90% of their, of their business. Some of them were doing some home delivery. Um, but then we brought this out ediblemarket.co, the, the online farmer's market about eight weeks before the start of the farmer's market. And just based on the conversations that I've had with those, uh, those vendors, food makers, farmers, and so on and so forth, saved probably 50% of their jobs because they had a way to, to actually sell all their food. And so that's been one of our biggest pivots, transitions um, into the online, uh, back to the online farmer's market. And that's, that's really helped change a lot of, of the way that, that w that's helped in the changing landscape of food purchasing. Um, being ready for that has been, it's been a godsend. It's been absolutely amazing. And we're, we're just looking forward to seeing what happens once October rolls around and we don't have 50 different farmers markets to compete with. Um, and people, people still want to buy local food. I mean, the end of the, uh, thank you, Wayne. I see your comment there. That's awesome. But at the end of the uh, farmer's market season, it's always one of our best two or three weeks is uh, because everybody's, they're getting everything they can saying, oh, well, I'll stock up with as much non-perishable as I can for the end of the season. Well, now that's going to gonna keep going year round. And if there is the dreaded second wave, um, we're ready for, for that. And so, um, I think I did, I, I, I think I've gone over pretty much everything very quickly. <laughs> you, did. you did great. No. Um, and I know you've got more, so I just wanted to pop in and, you know, I see Kathy Height. Good morning to you. Thank you for hopping on state representative Tracy Kropdarf. I also see her on, on Hi, that, another one of my screens. So she's from that, from that side. Bernadette, I also see you on here as well. For those of you that are just now hopping on here with us, we have Nathan Mudd. He leads the Westminster Farmers Market, but not just that. He's also the brain behind the Edible Market uh, Colorado, which is their online farmers market version that kicked off about eight weeks before the market actually uh, came back to us in June. And that's the market that takes place every weekend. I know that they have various locations, Westminster, there's Arvada, you also serve Brighton, if I'm not mistaken. The funny thing is we were talking and you're like, oh, I had this online and sales have gone up. I actually discovered your online platform already, and we've been promoting it um, nice. through our PPE suppliers list because you can get the uh, type of great high grade hand sanitizer from one of those vendors that's on there. So very early on when hand sanitizer was not easily available in those grocery stores or even drugstores, the farmer's market online actually had that option available. So know I that we've you, also bro. been pushing that out for you as well. So maybe touch on a variety of things, kind of what you guys did very early on. Um, and I want you to kind of go in a little bit more detail because you shared this when you said no samples. You alluded to it briefly at the start when you said food vendors and non. Now there's there, the it's strictly food vendors that are at these or, or there's there's one artisan at both markets we have an artisan and um somebody who makes organic uh color all colorado made uh like skin products you know facial skin products as well called taspens right but none of the uh the general ones that we generally would right. have seen over there, right. sure. Yeah, we've, uh, you know, there was uh, there was a lot of um, 
for lack of a better term, there was a lot of MLM folks um, that you typically see at farmers markets. We've always had a really low ratio of them because I really want to make sure that we're focusing on food. So it's usually about 10% of our vendors in the past have been uh, non-food. And we really, we only have the two this year. Um, so there's usually about five or six per market and we, we, we cut that down. We also still limited the number of, of spaces. That was another thing. Um, so after the market did pick up, we, we and people, vendors saw, oh, this is going to happen. We can do this. We actually, we have to put six feet in between each one of the booths, even though the vendors are, are, are essentially 10 feet apart because their booths are 10 feet apart. We have to put an additional six feet in between them. So what that did is it reduced the overall size of, of space that we could fill by 50%. And so uh, in Westminster, you know, we had room to grow. Um, it's in a, a large parking lot with, with shaded, a nice, nice grassy shaded area. Um, but in Arvada, we didn't have that. And we actually had to move the market because of the space constraints because we would have we would have dropped to such a small market that it wouldn't have been worth doing for, wow. for us or the vendors. Well, and I'm so glad that you touched on some of the parameters that you have in place. You know, the six feet that are there, the entrances, the exits, these are thought out plans that are out there. And I'm, I'm shocked still that you have such a decline in your revenue, given that you already have a lot of these parameters in place. And when you really think about it, these farmers markets are outdoor, right? And so they're not in that constrained environment that we're seeing a wealth of people that are rushing into a grocery store and they are shoulder to shoulder and, you know, touching similar products back and forth. And so with the farmer's market, I feel like you have a lesser traffic, but a more spread out approach to it. Um, and again, it's outdoor, so it's not in a contained environment that's there. So um, I think those are some of the key messages people could take. I have a couple of questions and then I'll have you kind of share some of your other ventures with us. Um, I know you're very passionate about the farmer's market and I, I, we've had conversations about food and security and access to food. And um, how do you see that, you know, what's the future of farmer's market? look like and how you impact the communities that you're in, especially the ones that might not be able to uh, easily access those on their own. So, uh, and I, I think, so one of the programs that we run at both of the farmer's markets is uh, the SNAP and Double Up. And so SNAP, for folks who don't know what SNAP it is, it's the, it's the new version of food stamps, essentially. And so we accept SNAP at, at the farmer's markets. And what's awesome is you can come in and use your SNAP card. We, we run your SNAP card. Then we give you cash back, um, the SNAP bucks. But through a program that we do with Live Well Colorado, uh, we actually will double the amount of, of up to $20, double the amount of, of money that we give you. So you get snap bucks and then we'll give you double up bucks. Now the double up bucks, they're unique because they can only be spent on uh, at the produce stands. So um, snap can be used for any foods. Um, but, but double up only, only there. So that's been a, that's been a, a, a big help. Um, one of our, one of our outreach issues, uh, that we couldn't do early on, but that we've started doing a, a little bit more now is we do go into, uh, lower income areas and, and things like that. And we, we used to, in years past, we put flyers on their, on their doors, which sounds super basic, but because, I think because of the beautiful graphics that we put on there and because it's the farmer's market, which people tend to like, and it's not, you know, I'm not, I'm not offering some service that people are, they like it. They I've actually had people when we put them up instead of getting mad saying, what are you doing? They say, can I have a couple of more? I've got some other people. Um, and so we, we actually delayed that early on. We didn't do the um, we didn't do that because People didn't want things on their door. They didn't want uh, touch points. Is is the term I've I've heard this called through the uh, health departments. They didn't want another touch point. But recently, within the past month, um, 
it's it seems to be a lot better and a lot more okay for uh, for that um, customers. You know, we actually ask people when they come through uh, because I I'm, I'm now with that one entry and one exit. I get to I get to have a really on time survey of all of the customers coming through over and over, and so I'll usually choose one or two questions a day to to ask all of them. So uh, did that kind of did that answer what you were asking? Yes, okay. it did. Yes, um, you know it, it's always nice for us to share how are we supporting all all members of our community, especially when we're trying to provide them with alternative, healthy options and choices. They aren't necessarily outside of their reach. Um, so I'm glad that you touched on some of those programs that you're doing, the bucks that you're distributing out and then going out into those lower income. So we have a few minutes and I just want you to touch a little bit on all the hats that you wear, if you can. Okay. <laughs> as it relates. Um, so we touched on the farmer's market, but that's not the only thing that you're doing. And so I want people to um, know as what the content has been that you've been sharing is not just through one silo of what your what your work is. It's through a number of lenses that you've been able to experience. It, it is for, for sure. And we work with, uh, gosh, we work with a lot of different partners. One thing that I, that I did want to mention that I could have included before is we're working with uh, schools and some nonprofit groups as well with the, uh, with the edible market.co to do a, a, a 10% give back program. Um, you know, we have a couple of schools, the school my, my child goes to and a couple more, um, so that is another way of, of doing outreach as, as well. And if there's nonprofits that are interested, we'll, we'll definitely look at working with that. So um, the many hats that, that, I, that I do wear. So um, first and foremost, I got started in local food because I went to law school to become an environmental lawyer. Um, and all through, through law school, I, I realized that being an environmental lawyer um, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So it was a lot more policy work and, and, and things like that, which are great. Um, but then I wanted a farmer's market in our community. And so, uh, my boss, when I started my legal career, um, is Mark Williams, which is the mayor of Arvada. And he was well-connected even back then. And I said, Mark, I want this. Can you help me find these groups to do it? And he said, well, no, uh, he, he introduced me to a lot of people and everybody just kept pointing back and saying, why don't you do it? And then I realized, oh, wait a second, this actually brings together all of the things that I wanna do um, and it's doing it, um, it's, it's health, it's environment, it's food. Um, it's all of those things. And so that led me to a lot of, a lot of different paths. And you can see, if you see this picture behind me, this is, uh, that's, that's the barn at Schoenberg Farms. And so we started, um, we started uh, uh, working with the folks in Westminster on a larger project to bring together all of the elements of local food kind of under one roof. And um, there were some projects in Westminster that, that some took off, some didn't, but then uh, the city of Brighton approached us with uh, a farm called Bromley Farm out in Brighton. And that kind of housed a local food incubator that we work to help uh, small local food businesses become medium sized businesses. Um, we have a fall festival, events, weddings, and so on for, so forth that take place out there. And then we also work with the uh, Veterans to Farmers, are our farmers out there, which is a, a national organization that does exactly what it sounds like, takes veter uh, military vets and trains them to be farmers. Um, and so those are those are the those are all those are the hats that I wear. Oh, and then um, you know, with COVID, I'm now a homeschool teacher. So uh, yeah, um, as I think most most parents in Jefferson County are, at least uh, at least through October. So. Oh my gosh. Well, hopefully schools can open fully back up that poor child. No, I'm <laughs> no just kidding. It's true. You're right. <laughs> that is awesome work though that you shared um, on what you're doing is really to the food incubator and the support, especially for our veterans. I see Muriel on here, Brad Hicks. Thank you both for hopping on. For those of you that are coming at the later point in this broadcast, know that a lot of the comments that Nathan has made, I tried to frantically type into the comment section for you. All information can be found in there. These videos are also available for you to rewind and replay. When you do so, give us that hashtag replay so I know that you tuned in later on. Nathan, if somebody wants to get a hold of you later, is there a website that they can go to or an email? 
Sure. So um, if they, I, I'm going to give you a couple. Um, if they want to, if they're interested in anything with the Edible Market, uh, the online uh, farmer's market, that's hello at ediblemarket.co. If they're interested in any of the farmer's markets, we, we consolidate that those, uh, that it will be changing, but right now it's Arvada Farmer's Market at Gmail. Dot com. I know <laughs> there, is, that email. there is a Westminster one that's, that's coming online. We're working with, uh, we're working with the Westminster business to actually provide that, uh, Westminster marketing, uh, team. And then, um, and then if you, if you have any questions just for me, um, what legal or otherwise, it's just, uh, uh, Nathan mud at me.com. And the websites are all uh, essentially um, ArvadaFarmersMarket.com, Westminster Farmers Market, Westminster Farmers Market, Colorado.com, and then right. Edible Market. Not in there. And Good then it's time. EdibleMarket.co. Um, so I might have said hello at Edible Farmers at Edible Market. Yeah, it's .co, not .com, just .co. Uh, oh. oh, hey Brian, how are you? Yes. <laughs> Brian Hatchers, it's great to see you. And yeah. Nathan, where can people find your markets? Like, are they, they're not yeah. daily. No, so Saturdays, is Westminster is on Saturdays at 98th and Sheridan at the Northwest Church of Christ. And then Sunday is our, in Old Town, Arvada. And if you get close to either one of them, um, you'll see signs that, that start directing you, directing you to that. Awesome. And what time was it? Uh, it's nine to one thirty, both Saturday and Sunday. Um, and there's also pickup. So if you order online, the pickup, the only pickup option we have is at the Westminster Farmers Market uh, Saturdays. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. And I typed in those times for everybody and locations as well into the comment section of this broadcast. We're already at 30 minutes. Was there anything that we didn't share that you were hoping to, Nathan, before I wrap this out? Uh, it's good to see everybody uh, again. Good to good to see the comments. Uh, thanks for having me on. It's see, awesome. you're, you're still loved, even though you fell off the radar <laughs> for a little bit. <laughs> well, hopefully well, we'll you. be back soon. Yes. And thank you, everybody, for hopping on, tuning in. I appreciate you. Um, hopefully now you're aware of some of the resources as it relates to local foods, so where you can access them, whether it's online or in person, and how you can support some of those local vendors that are in the area here in Westminster, of course, in Arvada and some of the surrounding communities as well. Nathan, I appreciate you for hopping on here with me. Thank Especially you. Because I spastically messaged you and creepily found several photos of you online. Um, but now that you know that those photos are out there, if you don't like them, you know, just close close those down so people don't take them in the future. But I appreciate all that you're doing as it relates to food. I think that's a huge component to uh, providing solutions for a lot of ailments that are currently um, around in our community, especially with COVID and, and any other health concerns that are around. So thank you for doing what you do in that arena. And we will be back here tomorrow, of course, for our next broadcast that's at 11 a.m. So tune in with us tomorrow uh, morning and be sure that you share this out with anyone that's interested in uh, farmers markets, if they're interested in understanding more of the future of them or food insecurity in general. Hello to you, Muriel. Thank you. I do see you on here with me as well. Um, share it out to your networks because a lot of people are interested in this information but don't necessarily know where they can find it um, and how to access or who to contact so most of our contact information is included into this comment section of this broadcast with that i'm going to let everybody go for today nathan stay with me as i close out thank you thank you, thank you.